future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. are tuned in to Better Late Than Never. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon or when my guest gets here. And then every Thursday at 7, Saturday at 1 on my syndicated CNBC, NBC News Radio Channel, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3. 3 FM 106.5 and then every day somewhere on iHeartRadio and this is a show about hope and happiness so there's no gossip, no scandal and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead I want you to focus on your own reality show and how you can be happy 88% of the time and a quick piece shout out to all my fabulous CEO space grads and fellow faculty and founder CEO The Dormans for a fantastic week in Florida. My first keynote got 99% incredible reviews. And so I have to practice what I teach with that one ugly is just release it. (laughs) And thanks to faculty member Cheryl Snap Connor. I am now in Forbes magazine. Yes, just published on Sunday night. Thank you very much. Hot off the press. So if you're a solo entrepreneur or a solopreneur, go check it out. I'm getting a lot of great love for that. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Peace in and peace out. And an excellent customer service to Lawrence on Delta Airlines and my seatmates coming back from Orlando. Also Spencer at Guitar Center. My new Sennheiser microphone worked fabulously on the red carpet Sunday at the Jump, Jive, and Thrive event. Thanks to publicist Joanne Geffen. Peace in, peace out. I got invited to cover and interview cancer survivors, thrivers, and performers for the show Grammy uh, and Oscar winner Melissa Etheridge I got to interview. Olympic gold medalist Jim gymnasts Shannon Miller and Lori Hernandez, UCLA NCAA six-time champion coach Miss Val, and Fran Drescher. And she'll be coming on my show next week for the second time uh, to talk about Trashing Cancer and the Health Summit. Since it is National uh, Breast Cancer and Cancer Awareness Month in October, we are highlighting that next week as well. And I'll be sharing all of my interviews on that show, so don't miss it. And now for today's show, she's well worth the wait. My sister from Agape, born in Ghana, Akuyo Graham is an actor, writer, and spiritual counselor. She's the founder of Spirit Awakening Foundation, an arts organization that mentors incarcerated children, at-risk foster, and runaway youth. Akuyo tours nationally with her critically acclaimed one-woman play, Spirit Awakening, and can be seen in numerous commercials, independent films, and TV shows. She's the author author of The Little Book of Transformation and the play Spirit Awakening. She's uh, a a beautiful soul. I'm grateful to have known her and we kind of travel in the same little circles at Agape and beyond and I'm proud to call her my sister. You can actually, uh, you'll probably recognize her as soon as we flash her on. She's been on NCIS. She's been on uh, Ben and, let's see, Ben and Ara, Danica, and a whole host of commercials and TV programs and movies. And the the, the beautiful, great reason why we uh, got to wait for her is she just got cast in a, in a lead. So without further ado, please welcome to the studio, Akuyo Graham. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Dr. Marissa, you are so kind and gracious. And I just want to thank you so much, oh, really. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, she she had to do wardrobe unplanned. She didn't know she was going to be cast as the star. Can, one, can you talk about the, it, one of the stars? Yes. Can you say what show it is or um, no? Not yet. I can't say too okay. much yet. <laughs> These days, you know, everything has an NDA. So, um, And I think they're doing that so they can control the narrative. Okay, you know, what's but, an NDA? A non-disclosure agreement. Oh, yes, but right, I'm right. really excited about this film. I can say that it's 
inspired by the film noir Laura, which is one of my all time favorite films. Oh. And in fact, one of the leads is uh, her character is called Laura. Mm. So um, I'm playing um, captain of a police precinct, which I've never done before. Uh-huh. So I'm really, but she's sexy. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. The sexy side of you. There's the spiritual and the spiritual sexy side of you. Yes. Sexy cop. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Well, congratulations oh, on that. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And and I actually wanted to have you here because you really you could just be doing acting and, yes. and just do acting and that's a full time right. job and you love doing it and you're good at it. But what happened that you moved from acting to this entire which has taken over your life? It sure has. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> so really take has. me back to that. <laughs> well, you know, um actually uh, Dr. Marissa, it happened when I'd moved to Los Angeles okay. and I was working quite a bit. I was cast in a TV film, then another T V uh film um a series and commercials and I remember going to my apartment and I I wasn't even at Agape then I wasn't a, um, a licensed spiritual counselor but I just sat there and I thought well and I said to myself out loud mm-hmm. well God is this it what I'm just gonna become famous and make money really <laughs> you know I, I want more that's a true story wow. I just felt like I knew there was more for me to contribute mm-hmm. in my life. Mm-hmm. And you're right. I love acting. Yeah. And um, and so right on the heels of uttering, I guess, w- what was a prayer, really. Yes, yes. I had an opportunity to mentor incarcerated juveniles. Wow. I didn't even know that there was a whole system of incarcerated children. Mm. Did not know mm-hmm. anything about mm-hmm. it at all. Mm-hmm. And um, I started um, with poetry and the work just blew me away. Yeah. I was so moved by the children that I w- that w- were entrusted to my care in the classes. And they really took to the program and it just blossomed mm. to becoming now a whole foundation uh, where I've trained other artists to teach the Spirit Awakening uh, program. Right. And we right. go into the juvenile facilities. We go into schools. It's both an intervention and a prevention program trying to help those that have been involved in gang activity or in violent activities mm-hmm. and prevent others from you know, doing those kinds of things. Right, right. So I'm going to put the moose on the table, uh, which is my Canadian version of the talking about the elephant in the room. Yes. So, and this is not, and, you, and anyone that knows me knows that I'm not actually thinking this or saying this, yes. but there would there are people who are saying to you, why don't you focus on healthy children or yes. healthy kids? Why are you focusing your attention on kids who knew right from wrong mm-hmm. and chose the wrong and they are just living the consequences of their choices? Sure. What do you say to that? I would say first and foremost, we work with that even, all- I'm sorry. That that I I'm like it tastes so bad just saying I know, that. right? Ugh, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> However, so. we know that, you know, some people do feel that right, way. Right, right. And I can understand, you know. Um, so first I want to say we work with all children. Our program, you don't have to be incarcerated or to have committed a crime mm-hmm. to go on a spiritual quest, if mm-hmm. you will, yeah. to discover your true self. You know, the requirements are not cr- uh, criminal activity. Right. What I will say, though, is that my focus and the focus of the organization has been children that have been neglected and abused, children in the foster care system, children who don't have the kinds of support that other children may have. Yes. You know, and one of the things we love to do actually is each year for the past ooh, five, six years, the Esalen Institute in Big Sur mm-hmm. has been incredibly generous and supportive of our work. And they allow us to bring up to about 15 kids there once a year. Wow. On a retreat. Wow. And so when we do those retreats, we take children that are doing very well. Some have never got into trouble, thank goodness. Yeah. And those who have got into trouble, we take them, we mix them up. Yeah. And unless the child tells you, this is my background, you wouldn't know mm-hmm. to look at the two. You mm-hmm. know, you just wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. And and that's because, you know, we all need a safe space to express, to yes. be who we are. Yes to be acknowledged, to be seen, and to be heard, Mm -hmm. you know? And Mm -hmm. so um, this work does reach out to children that have never uh, done any criminal activity. And to that, I want to say some of the children really are not aware of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They are children, you know, and some of them 
are imitating what they've seen. Correct. You know, I, and I dare to even go further, Dr. Marissa, and say this country, you know, has a lot of violent history. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the TV shows, any number of them, which I enjoy watching, right. but at the end of each episode, most of the time, especially if it's a police drama, how do they resolve everything? Through violence. Right. Right. You know, it's always resolved through violence. Right. I said violence resolves anything. Right. And it really and it doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my daughter, when she was 11, said, how do you get to peace through war? I Hello. don't understand it. Wow. I don't understand it. Yeah. What a great question. It was. An... And she's right. Yeah. You know, yeah. but if this is what we're setting up for children. Yeah. You know, if this is what we're saying is the example and then they imitate us. Then, you know, yes. th why are we complaining? They're right. doing exactly what they see right. the adults right. around them right. do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the system is broken. Yes. It is it is not a fair system. That's I right. just saw this video. Someone sent it to me on YouTube. And this brilliant guy had this. He said, I have a $100 bill. Mm -hmm. You know, race whoever gets to me first yes. gets the $100 bill. And then he goes, before you start, I want to ask you a series of questions. Yes. How many of you come from a two-parent home? Let's take a step forward. How many of you mm. uh, um, went uh, to a, uh, a paid-for school? Uh, step, step ahead. Uh, and then, so, you know, by the end of all those questions... He goes, do you recognize that this is not a fair start? Do yes. you recognize? And look at the people who are behind you. Look at the people who are not as close. Is it really? Yes. How can you say That's right. that everybody has an equal fair chance? That's right. They don't. If you're a child and you grow up with violence, with abuse, with neglect, with abandonment, right. and then there's a, there's a solution for you, mm -hmm. which is called a gang, where they provide yeah. you with a family That's or right. love. Community, with yes. a community, then why wouldn't you as a child That's make right. those kinds of decisions? That's right. What, 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 how can you say that children who grow up being told they are worthless mm -hmm. and useless and it's seven out of ten kids That's are in right. some kinds, how can you say that they don't pick up something right. that will continue that broken track? How can you say wh right. exactly what I just said earlier mm -hmm. that, you know, it's it's about your choices and consequences. Yes. Children don't have that kind of fair, you know, That's level right. playing ground. Mm -hmm. So so good for you and what you're doing and what you've decided to do with your you're my favorite kind of actor. Uh, Fran Dresser's is another one uh, who takes their limelight mm -hmm. and uses it as a flashlight That's right. to shine into the darkness and to help out people. So for that, I'm giving you Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. <laughs> I gratefully accept. Well, yes. you know, uh, my feeling is, Dr. Marissa, I've been given so much. Even just today, your graciousness, your mm -hmm. gift that you're giving to me, I've been given so much, so how could I not give back? Mm. You know, um, Dr. Michael Beckwith always says, you know, living from the overflow. Yes. And I really can say I get to live from the overflow, and I'm so grateful. Yes. So it's the least I can do. Yes. You know, the opportunities that have been given me, the people who have supported me, my dreams, and, you know, things I love to do. Again, coming on your show, you know, you heard about it, and you were like, okay, you coming to my show. You know, <laughs> yeah, I wanted it was, to. It was, it was so, you Absolutely. know, it was beautiful. Oh. So how could I not take that yeah. and give back? Yeah. You know, I've been given so much. Yes. And so. since you mentioned the M word <laughs> or the R word, <laughs> uh, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, who is my big brother, your yes. big brother, yes. we're sisters by that. And he uh, actually was intending to come on. Yes. And at first, you know, humble as he is, he's Isn't like, he? I'm, I'm getting honored in That's your right. program, that's embarrassing to come on, but I just <laughs> wanted him to come on because he is so beloved and he does do such good work. He's the living, you know, example for us. Yes. Right? Yes. To live in our fullest. Absolutely. To live from the overflow. That's right. To shine our light and yes. not to uh, put it under any kind of bushel. That's and right. No way in heaven. That's and, right. And uh, so peace in, peace out. I know he's, uh, he was speaking at Howard University. He's 
he's yes. got a super booked uh, schedule, but his intention was to uh, to come on and support you and and to 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 you know shed a little light. I think we did a pretty good job. And when he <laughs> sees us later, hopefully he'll say yes. Uh, That's right. uh, as far as why we need to balance yes. these things out. I mean, that's mm-hmm. what it is. We want to that's provide right. balance for kids who did not get a fair start. That's who right. Who did not get uh, um, right. a a a, a a show or a an environment of unconditional love, Absolutely. or even a little conditional, <laughs> right? Even a little bit, <laughs> little yes. little bit of conditional. Yes. So tell me about your program. So you are, uh, what date? What's it called? I'll sure. let you do all of this. Voices of the Unheard is our flagship event, which we do every year, and we've started uh, doing this at Agape Spiritual Center in Culver City, here in Southern California. And it's on a Saturday this year. It's Saturday, October 28th at 2 p.m. And what it is is a series of performances, uh, spoken word, dance, and music. And we take the written pieces written by incarcerated children right now, children that have been in the Spirit Awakening program. Mm -hmm. And then these pieces are interpreted maybe sometimes as a dance piece or a musical selection. And they are read. Reverend Michael is always one of our actors. We have guest um, artists that come and read these pieces written by the children mm. along with formerly incarcerated uh, now young adults that uh, have come through the system and have been a part of our program as well. Mm. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a really beautiful event because it, it sheds light and it, it's an opportunity for people to show up and support the lives of children that are really trying hard to turn their lives around, right. you know, right. and to do the right thing now, right. you know, because um, they now know that their love is present and love is available mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. them specifically. Mm-hmm. So oftentimes people will ask me, well, how can I help? You know, and I, I show up. Yeah. You know, be a surrogate stand in for a child, yeah. you know, who may not have the family unit. Right. You know, um, I remember um, in some schools, sometimes I show up as a parent, right. as a grandparent, right. you know, standing in. Um, if you've ever been to some of the probation facilities, um, sometimes Sundays is usually the visiting day. Mm. And one of the saddest things, I think, is, you know, to see a 15, a 14 year old child who's incarcerated and no one's coming to visit them. Ugh. You know, children yeah. just want to be loved. Right, they just right, want right, to be loved, like right, all of us. Right, you right. know. So if you have time on your hands, I think this is a great. Uh, it would be uh, wonderful. You know, just go adopt someone and show up on That's probation right. days just to to greet them. That's right. I know a bunch of people who have you know time on their hands. That's and, right. And that that would make a difference. And you know, just not just for the 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 fundraising aspect of showing up Mm -hmm. but think of what a child who is now in a performance you know Mm -hmm. kids who go to school and they have a school performance yes what would that feel like to know that you came for them that's right to sit and watch their heart being expressed through their poetry and their dance that would be the gift it's not so much the the paying the ticket that's it's right. showing up up that's right to that so saturday october the 28th yes at what time 2 p.m 2 p.m in the afternoon so you can still have your saturday night date night that's so right. uh, or you can start it early at 2 p.m <laughs> right yes, absolutely. and it's at the agape international spiritual center that's yes. in uh culver city so anyone from Southern California has no excuse That's on right. how to go. Um, what would you say for these kids, the the most meaningful words or the most meaningful impact has been for them? I mean, you get first line, you know, what what has what has this work done for them? Well, you know, I have a quote actually, which I love. Um, one of our young women, Hunter beautiful child. I met her at a probation facility Mm -hmm. and um, she was serving her time. Now she's out. She's part of our mentoring program. She's one of our peer mentors. I've met her mother. And Hunter said something. She said, you know, um, there's all this attention when they're locked up. And um, but oftentimes when they leave, there's no more support. Mm -hmm. So she feels that support Uh, The aftercare is the most important. And what she actually said, Dr. Marissa, is, you know, I didn't need to be locked up 
and scared in and, and you know and scared into doing good. Right. You know, I needed a circle of care and love, mm. and that is what Spirit Awakening has provided for oh, me. Oh, beautiful! It's it just beautiful. so touched my heart because mm. that's what we want to be there. We want to yeah. be there for those kids that perhaps fall through the cracks, the ones that maybe the school system just doesn't work for them the right. way it's structured. Right. You know, right. and not all of us learn the same way. Right. You know, and and so we want to be that place where they can come and feel safe to be able to express what's in their hearts, to be able to uh, um, not only express their feelings, but to meet with wonderful guest uh, speakers and people. And I want you to be one of them, Dr. Marissa, you know, to meet really um, cutting edge, brilliant people that are um, creative and dynamic and live a very artistic life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's Mm -hmm. what we want to inspire in these children. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and in fact, um, our director of special uh, projects, Megan, was telling me that the founder of Patagonia, Patagonia Stores, was saying that if you're looking for innovation and some bright ideas, speak to kids in juvenile hall. And he's absolutely right, you know, because... Through their actions, these mm. children are telling us the status quo doesn't work for me. Right. You know, we know that. Bec- and they're acting out. You yeah. know, when you're acting out, you want attention. You want to say something. Right. And it's not that we agree with what they, they're they doing. Right. You know, they need to be taught how to communicate right. in a way that's not criminal or doesn't hurt other people or themselves. Absolutely. You know, yet the energy. You mm-hmm. know, you're a doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all mm-hmm. energy. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. And so Absolutely. if they can learn how to channel that energy in a way that's effective, that's creative, right. that's imaginative, right. yeah. it's the same energy energy it just needs to be used yes, differently balance. it needs to be balanced, balanced. yeah yeah right? absolutely and absolutely so. well well beautiful and you know the 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 thing that struck me in speaking to um some of the the, the people who are doing uh, activists and mm-hmm. and people who are trying to balance things out that black lives matter mm-hmm. all lives matter That's but right. there's but there's definitely uh, a a solution to the imbalance in the system. Yes. So just the same way as y- you were saying, when they come out and there's the attention's gone, mm-hmm. negative or positive, right. um, that there's such a high rate of recidivism. Mm-hmm. I can never say recidivism. that word right. But that's yes. it. <laughs> it's a hard because, word because <laughs> you know it would make sense when they, as children, also come out. Mm-hmm. They have a record, so it's hard for them to get a job. They've yeah. learned communication mm-hmm. uh, habits that are not useful. Yep. And then uh, why not go back in where they were hot? That's right. right. Yeah. So so it is a system That's right. that requires a system solution. Absolutely. So the first the first step is showing up at the th- at the event That's so that right. all of, how many kids are going to be performing? We'll have about 10 or so. 10 or so. Yeah. Okay. So those 10 kids are counting on you to show up. That's right. And then And uh, there'll be lots in the audience too. Right. I'm wondering I I bet if I googled organizations that uh, go into probations mm-hmm. for visitation there's probably someone out there and if not that's I'm right. sure you can grow they one. Can, yes, that's right. <laughs> I have an arm to do that. Yes. I know that Agape has a prison ministry that's right. system. But, that's right. Um, I, 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 and I think the best is if you are a loan officer out there right now or you are an HR mm-hmm. and you're um, a person who... Uh, hires or That's makes right. those or or loans uh, for housing. Mm-hmm. I want you to be really, really cognizant that the system is not fair. And even though you may not be biased, yes. many of the people selecting to, for people to win that hundred dollar bill yes. on the race have biases. And so you have to really. It's not about quotas, mm-hmm. but it's about. Um, balancing out a system that is n- imbalanced. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. thank you for saying that, yeah. Dr. Marissa, yeah. to give these young people an opportunity yes. and a chance. Yes. You know, so that uh, there's a big thing now to get us to take off that box that you have to check. Have you ever been convicted of a felon, you know, when you apply for employment? Mm-hmm. Because if you do say yes, oftentimes people will just throw your um, right application right. away. Right. And I know for sure yeah. we have some brilliant minds that yes. are, you know, locked up. And once yes. they come out, that mind is still brilliant. Yes. You know, I know yes. because I work with these children. Yes. And sometimes what they say, it's like your daughter, you know, when she asked you mm-hmm. that question, mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. are they know. amazing. Yeah. 
You yeah. know, they yeah. really are. Yeah. And and I think as a society, we can do a better job of really respecting children, yes. respecting their ideas and yes. what they have to say. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not just cute and lovable. Right. You know, they right. actually have something to contribute. Absolutely. Even at such a young age. Absolutely. They really do. Absolutely. We're out of time, and it's too bad. But, I mean, we, we, we said what we needed to say. Yeah. You need to show up on yes. October the 28th for Spirit Awakening at the Agape International Spiritual Center. Please do support Okuyo's work. I do this on the show all the time where I bring people who are worthy of support because they are the leaders leading a movement. There's, you know, if you're currently temporarily out of work and you have time on your hands, this is a great organization to go and offer your services and offer your time and offer your hands and offer your heart so that is it for today's show i am um thank you so much akuyo for coming on and bless you you. for all that you do thank you so much oh one quick question who do you think uh i always ask my guests who who they would like one person that you're grateful to oh reverend michael okay (laughs) (laughs) easy and reverend michael yeah yeah absolutely and and the other thing is i love you know you you embody this uh your work mm-hmm. so you're from ghana yes. i got to visit ghana in 2010 i was with Reverend michael and oh and brother and, ishmael and brother ishmael Tete yes. and my other brother and when i asked both of them separately who's the bigger brother of mine they both <laughs> pointed at each other which i thought was really funny but ghana means with god yes and i and i just love that country because you could tell in the energy that's right and, and on it is it is such a solid place yes it is you i know, agree you know and yes. balancing out the start of the slave trade yes. with the freedom from slavery that's right i just love that so i wanted to make sure i mentioned that peace in peace out to ghana yes <laughs> beautiful all right thank you again thank you dr marissa and we'll get you your- <laughs> see, see. And we'll have a very quick balance bar at the end of the show. (laughs) The Asian Oprah giveaway is actually two books. It is Akuya Graham's Little Book of Transformation and a book of student writings called Voices of the Unheard. If you would like a copy of that, uh, one of each of those books, please go to forbalance.org. Fill out my contact form and I will get those books to you. Today is day 10 on the 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa. I don't have time to do the tip. So go on Dr. Marissa. Make sure you give me the finger. I mean a thumbs up and you'll get the daily tip there. And uh, join me at Soldier Field in Chicago for Journey's Dream. It is uh, an event highlighting mental health and um, supporting and all those organizations that do so. I'm grateful that I got asked to participate in that. And so if you are a listener in the Chicago area, please go to journeysdream.org and volunteer for that. If you'd like to have your product or service highlighted with me, having a commercial sale till the end of the year, a 30 second commercial for only $280. So very affordable, hope and happiness, whatever it is, I'd love to help you out with that. You can help keep the show alive. Next week, I am. Oh, and then one more picture was my sailing buds. I'm uh, doing the regatta this weekend. So I'm with the Long Beach uh, women's sailing team. So wish us luck at the uh, Lemwad, uh, the uh, the uh, memorial um, one design women's regatta. So that's this coming weekend. Also next week. Uh, you are going to be blessed with a second showing of Fran Drescher. I'm actually going to show her little mini interview that I had on the pink carpet at UCLA on Sunday with the Jump, Jive, and Thrive. That is also going to be aired on CBS October 21st, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But next week, I will start the show with Fran and then be showing all of my interviews with Shannon Miller and Lori Hernandez, U.S. Olympic gold gymnastics, and then and Melissa Etheridge, Grammy and Oscar Award winning country singer and more. So tune in next week for a show about hope and happiness. Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa Pay. That's P for positive E-I. And remember, it's all about balance. 
Okay, jazz lovers, it's time to celebrate life with a Catalina Island weekend getaway with jazz greats like Rick Braun, Richard Elliott, Manhattan Transfer, Take Six, Gerald Albright, and Norman Brown. Don't miss the 31st Jazz Tracks Festival at the beautiful Avalon Casino on Catalina Island two weekends, October 12th and 19th. Tickets are selling out fast, so go to jazztracks.com. That's jazztracks with an X dot com today. Do you ever wish that you had more energy and better overall health? Dr. Marissa here, and I've been drinking Calibrate. It has a delicious fruity taste that harnesses the emerging science of nutrigenomics with the ultimate source of vitality, your own body. It's pure vegan, non-GMO, and gluten-free. For a free gift card, go to www.getswitchedonnow.com and change the conversation about the way we age. Instead of a second caller, I have a special little treat for us today because I got invited to go to Soldiers Field and it's for a very good cause. So please welcome to the studio two of my buds and uh, co-conspirators in life to balance out all the bad news and to focus the light of love on areas that are formerly in darkness. So I have um, uh, a new friend... Yeah, they get their applause ahead of time. (laughs) Not because they deserve it, Dave, right? (laughs) This is my wordplay friend. Uh, He is a past guest of mine. He's incredible. He has a program that has been approved by the Pentagon, among other things. He's all about your peak performance and how you can be excellent in your life and do the very best that you can. His name is Dave Austin. And then there we go. And then because he loves the applause. So you just like total. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and then my my new friend that I got to meet in August, who is I call him affectionately my brother, uh, who uh, is uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, all the way through and has a heart just this big beyond limitless his name's mark haddis he is the founder of this organization that's putting on uh journey's dream and he's also he also has the uncanny ability to look into people and i'll never forget he looked into me and he goes wow you're like really clear i've never seen anybody so clear energetically except for one little area and I'm like, really? Uh, thank you. And then, and he goes, yeah, he's one that I go, what's that? And he goes, well, it's a, it's an F you. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he goes, that's the protective part. And he was absolutely right. So I've been doing some heart work trying to heal that part that is a little more, you know, back off, just stay like this, you know, come this close. And so I, I'm really grateful, Mark. I've been working very, very, very uh, uh, steadily on opening that heart more so maybe i'll have one as big as yours soon so that's my friends and they're going to tell you about an opportunity to uh, make a difference so i don't know who wants to go first i'll go okay so uh, i'm getting feedback so on my side oh yeah i'm getting a little feedback from you Uh, can you turn your microphone down uh yes how's that better okay i can't hear you but oh, okay we can hear you all right so one of the things that we have known about people for eternity is that we're loving human beings right we all treat each other well and with respect and obviously that's not exactly true when we look out in the world but we i ended that. up building a company and selling a company and going through kind of a personal crisis where I felt very divided. I wasn't really clear on who I was. I was trying to please ideas I had of what I was supposed to be and ended up going through a transformation that um, was a very healthy transformation for me, but the beginning of it was kind of scary. And I ended up in a psych ward and I was diagnosed as bipolar so being a business leader and then in the psych ward diagnosis bipolar, I wasn't very comfortable with that. And as I got comfortable with it, I realized that 
the worldview was that I was kind of broken and there was no way to get well and I'd be on medications the rest of my life. And it just didn't resonate as being true for me. So I am a very faithful, spiritual person. I prayed for guidance. You know, if there was a way to heal it, that that way would appear. And it did. So I was extremely thankful that it did. And it took about three years. Um, but I ended up getting to a very healthy state off all medications. And um, that's been that way for about three years. And I connected with some other really brilliant people who had been affected by mental health in a way. And they had lost their son, Journey, um, who had been diagnosed as schizophrenic, mm. and he walked off a six-story building. Mm. And we collaborated and decided, let's build an organization where people can find resources of hope, where we could aggregate solutions that exist around the planet, and they could find those practitioners or those programs or whatever to, whatever is good for them, mm -hmm. uh, but create a trusted resource for our society today and create it, co-create it with many, many, many people. So that was the launch of Journey's Dream. And we're doing a big event on November 4th at Soldier Field, as you mentioned, with some really cool people I'll let Dave talk about because he's had a big hand in pulling that together to kind of come together as a community and celebrate a new belief system that all people can fully recover from a mental health challenge. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And, and I'm so glad it was true for you. And it is true for many, many people. I think it's way too easy to diagnose and then to get on that hamster wheel of uh, medication that has side effects that are worse than the actual symptoms. So I, you know, I, I tread lightly when I talk about this stuff. I'm not saying that medication doesn't have its use, but I think that um, if, if, you know, what you're talking about and looking at things holistically and bringing all the resources, the hope together is, is an absolutely necessary thing. And that's why I'm fully on board and wanted to and have you. To, and to echo that, we believe that medication is extremely useful as well. I mean, without it, I probably would have killed somebody or been dead. You know, it's, it's, so it helped stabilize me. It helped get me into a healthier state of being in order to then find the solutions, but it doesn't heal. And we know that the medication right. though does help, you know, bridge the gap as someone goes through whatever their um, healing transformation is. Right. Right. Yeah. But I think it's important for people to, to know that there's all kinds of different modalities and that's where really what we're becoming is that what they've, what Mark and, and uh, Rex and Mitzi and Brea have formed is, is a place that there you can see all the things that are available to you. Because the truth is, if you lose hope, what do you really have? Yeah. And so, you know, our tagline is hope is here. Come here and find the hope and meet you right where you are. Because mm -hmm. different things are perfect for different people. And we want to have it all there for you. So why did we choose Soldiers Field, you know, where the Chicago Bears play in, in, in uh, Chicago? I mean, one of the most historic NFL stadiums. Why do we choose that particular place? Why, Dave? Well, <laughs> <laughs> because it's, so, it's Soldiers Field. And we're bringing together Soldiers of Hope. And that's who we all need to stand up. That's how we are going to make a difference in this world. We don't need weapons to do this. We need our hearts. We need our souls. We need commitment on all levels. And we can have an impact mm -hmm. on this. You know, one out of four people are affected by mental illness. Did one you know that? Four. I mean, no. it's dramatic. One, one out, out of four. four. Mm -hmm. I, Think I've of how heard many that. Yeah, I've heard one out of four are taking either antipsychotics or anti um, anti anxiety or antipsychotics. So yeah, so think about that. And if we can have an impact on that, and, and there's an epidemic as far as suicides right now, especially in our youth, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. to hit this straight up. And there are answers. There's places just people don't know where to turn. And yeah. so we're bringing together anybody who wants to be a soldier of hope. And take this on because it takes a it takes an army it takes all of us collectively saying yes we're going to have impact so we so we 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 chose soldiers field because um it's the perfect place to i i believe and we believe to to host the very first event to bring up awareness and then you know we have frank shankowitz you know who you know friend of yours too yeah. who started the make a wish foundation 
Yeah. He's coming in because he is so committed to this. And he's had some issues when he was a highway patrolman that I didn't even know before that he's going to share with us because he had to be, you know, brought out to the bloodiest scenes. And he had what many of our military guys have, you know, uh, that post dramatic syndrome. Right. And right. so he had to go through that. And then David Stanley, who is brother of Elvis Presley, he was the one that found Elvis, you know, there died. And there's a lot of things that the media just doesn't know about the mental issues that were going on there. And Dave will come and, and, and share that. There's going to be some insights that are going to blow people away. But at the end of the, at the end of the day, it's not about the problem. It's always about the solution. And we're going to bring, we're not going to stay in the problem. We're going to go to higher elevation. We're going to be in the solution. And there are solutions. Mark is an absolutely perfect, perfect example of a way to go through this. Right. And he now is helping so many others go through it. But there's all kinds of different things that we can do. And so we want to make that available for everyone so they know there's always hope. Great. Now, how? what l different levels of involvement are we looking at? So we've got people that are invited to actually attend. I'm, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of room <laughs> and we can ha expect to hear some great speakers. And there's going to be, you know, people who have solutions that will be there with some uh, samples. Is that what I'm guessing? Or uh, that that all like tables of hope. And then uh, we are looking for ground level sponsors, right? It's people who would like to support this work and come in as gold or platinum. Go ahead and explain all that. Yeah, so thank you. We have, and we're still refining the exact points of the program, but yes, there's an opportunity for sponsors, you know, to put their brand in front of this community. And you know, we're talking about hundreds of people that they can reach and support this organization and also, you know, bring, uh, you know, people from their company, their organization, you know, whatever it is that they're sponsoring from. And there's a variety of things that people are interested. They can certainly, you know, reach out and contact us. Uh, through journeysdream.org um, or directly, you know, individually. Um, my, however, however you'd like to communicate that. Yes. Journeys, journeysdream.org is the uh, website. So I think I put it up there on their lower th third. And I think I might have a snapshot. It's that turquoise purple. I did a shot of that. Um, but they can go there and see the kinds of involvement, right? The, the level of support. Yeah, so we have a sponsorship package we can share with anybody who's interested. Uh, we're looking for volunteers, people who uh, they're passionate about this, um, but they may not have the funds to get out there and they want to participate. So mm -hmm. we're looking for that. Mm -hmm. And then people can attend. And, you know, this is a big part of this is to create awareness. Let's create a coalition and awareness of the mission. Right. And as we start to create that coalition, we'll branch off and continue with additional fundraising activities. So we're raising some funds here, but that's going to be um, just part of the event. It's going to be a stellar, amazing, not only just a networking event, because there's going to be brilliant, awesome human beings there, but truly educational about some of the core advances that have been happening in this arena. Mm -hmm. And we're going to share an amazing video up on the Jumbotron. You know, you're going to do it, do it, <laughs> go big, I guess, you know, right. in Chicago, um, the soldiers field did a whole revamping of their stadium. And it's really, it's just, uh, it's going to be an amazing event. I think we're all going to be able to lift each other up. I mean, and, and, and what I talked about earlier, go to that higher ground where all the solutions lie. Right. And, and it's, it's, you know, the sponsors, you know, to do something like this, to have this kind of world effect, you do need people to step up, but it's mm -hmm. going to take, as I said earlier, an army, all of us uniting, all of us having that passion together so right. that we will and know that we'll make a dent in the suicide rates and in uh, those that are struggling that, that maybe feel like they've lost hope, mm -hmm. you know, right now mm -hmm. they're going to find it here. This is just the kickoff to it all. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a life sentence. Uh, two of my most important years of my life I actually spent uh, at Hillview Mental Health Center 
uh, when I was getting my uh, degree and I got to uh, start as a psych aide and work up to uh, program management level. And I had 18 chronically mentally ill patients and I wrote music, uh, a song for them. And if there's a piano out there, I think uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to jump on it. But um, it was two of the most important years of my life because I learned the fragility between health and you know mental health and ill health and it was just amazing if you uh, haven't seen there's a, a movie called awakenings that i tell all people to go see because it really helps you have compassion and identification for people who are who feel trapped in that and uh i'm so grateful that that the the motto here is, is there's hope and that it is on a, a, a field of hope because it really we're so, we're in this together. We're, all 7.3 billion of us are in this together. And and no one, I mean, that's what life is, is to discover, you know, of what service we can be. So I'm grateful for your ideas. I'm grateful for your experience and how you have turned, you know, Mark, you're a perfect example of people who have gone through hardship, you know, from, you know, millionaire tech to ending up in a psych ward and then not hiding that experience but using that experience now to turn that light back on uh, an entire community that could use a little more hope. So for that, I'd like to give you Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. That's for you, Mark. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, not today. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm clapping with that whole group. I'm right with you, Mar yeah. uh, Marissa. It, it is amazing yeah. what what Mark is doing and how, I mean, think about how to be that vulnerable, that, that humility going, as you say, a, a multimillionaire successful businessman to say, Hey, it doesn't matter how much money you make. doesn't matter where you are in life. These things happen. Right. Right. And there are solutions. So Absolutely. I'm clapping with the group right there. All right. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mark. We are out of time. Journeysdream.org. If you know anyone who is touched by mental illness, if you know any facilities that would like to get, uh, you know, exposure at Soldiers Field, if we want to unite all of the separated efforts into one giant ball of hope, this is it. Thank you so much. And uh, journeysdream.org. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Do you ever wish that you had more energy and better overall health? Dr. Marissa here, and I've been drinking Calibrate. It has a delicious fruity taste that harnesses the emerging science of nutrigenomics with the ultimate source of vitality, your own body. It's pure vegan, non-GMO, and gluten-free. For a free gift card, go to www.getswitchedonnow.com and change the conversation about the way we age.